Whether you believe it's a spiritual thing or a psychological thing, on some kind of level, your beliefs shape your reality. And so many people are conditioned by their past to have highly dysfunctional beliefs. Beliefs that lead them to live out a mediocre existence, a life that could be completely transformed into something exciting and inspiring with the installation of a few new empowering beliefs. And installing these beliefs is a case of reconditioning yourself by first recognizing their value, repeating them through affirmation, and then by living them. So in this video, here's seven beliefs that I invite you to take on so you can live a truly great life. Just a very quick announcement before we get straight into it. A few more slots have opened up for the free one-to-one -to, -one to chat about whether you'd be a good fit for the Consciousness Revolution program to overcome low self-esteem or low confidence and put you on track with creating what you really want in your life. So if that interests you, head over to speaktoalex.com and book yourself a time for us to speak and stay with us until the end of the video for more details. But in the meantime, let's get straight to it. The first belief you must have to live a great life is, I am capable of massive transformation. I am capable of massive transformation. There was once a time when we thought people's brains get to a certain point of growth and then after that we become rigid and slow to change. Many people thought, sure, we're able to learn a few new things here and there, but you know, after a certain age, for the most part, we're kind of stuck in our ways. You know, you've heard the saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, it turns out that's not really true. And research around neuroplasticity shows adult brains can still go through significant structural changes through the majority of our lives. And the crazy thing is, many people ask me something like, Alex, I'm 28, is it too late to change? And I'm thinking, dude, I'm like 34 and I feel like I'm only just getting started. The amount that I've changed over the last three years would be mind blowing to my three year ago self. But it turns out with persistence and patience, you can learn new skills and behaviors that can completely transform your life upside down in a really good way. You can learn to be more present, more aware, more confident, more forgiving, and more able to attract more abundance, whether materially or monetarily, or within your connections and relationships. It just takes self-inquiry and relearning through curiosity and reconditioning, and a belief that you are capable of massive transformation. The second belief you must have to live a great life is, I have a lot to offer. I have a lot to offer because so many people I speak to have such low estimations of what they're capable of and what they have to offer and contribute. But let me say this, everyone has a unique experience that gives them something unique to offer and contribute to the world. Every human experience, every angle is another angle that other people have yet to see and can learn from. And the crazy thing is, I speak to so many people who think they don't have anything to offer because they've been through hardship or struggles or failures and the breakdown of a relationship or other challenges. And yet, if this is you, it's often the very fact that you have been through these challenges that means you have something very special and unique to offer. It's often your challenges that turn into superpowers because they can serve as a call to awakening from your thinking mind dominating your life. They can serve to give you empathy for the suffering of others, allowing you to more effectively contribute because you have mistakes you can learn from and situations you'd rather avoid so you can help others avoid the same mistakes and help them when they're in similar tough situations that you once experienced. And this 
is probably more valuable than you'll ever know. The third belief you must have to live a great life is most people, deep down, most people have good intentions. It was Eckhart Tolle who said, people only act at the level of consciousness they have at the time. And that level of consciousness is often low in a world where the vast majority of people are fully identified with a sense of separate self in the mind that feels the constant need to be propped up or defended. We've all at some point in our lives been involved in arguments that seem to go round and round with no one learning anything new and the whole thing just serving to solidify the mental positions of each person. And that's the nature of ego, the source of so much human dysfunction, leading to anything from mild neuroticisms to full on bursts of anger that end in negativity or destruction or in some extreme cases, tragedy. And of course, some people have so many layers of ego, it seems like they're rotten to the core. A small minority of people are so dangerous, they need to be locked away to protect others. But most people, when you get below the layers of ego and defenses, have good intentions. It might seem hard to believe, but most people just want to be loved and to love. It's just many people go about it in dysfunctional ways. But if you're able to see through it and communicate with people in presence and with compassion and patience, you'll see their good intentions come out sooner than you expect. And a whole new world of connection and opportunity will open up for you. The fourth belief you must have to live a great life is to attract people who are truly like me. I first have to truly be me. You see, so many of us go through life putting on a front, right? Thinking that we have to be and act a certain way to win the approval of others. And maybe for a short amount of time, it seems to work. But it won't be long before we realize that the people we've attracted into our lives based off this false people pleasing persona are not the ones who we resonate with the most. Now, of course, this isn't an excuse to be careless and inconsiderate. We can all benefit from learning deeper listening skills and patience and understanding and empathy. I'm talking about not sharing your interests or your humor or your existential musings because you think the other person won't be into it. But if you don't, then you'll never be seen by someone who are into your vibe and never get to experience the joy of connecting with those that share many of the things that mean the most to you. So just know that to attract people who are truly like you and are truly like you, you first have to truly be you out in the world for others to see. And if any of these beliefs resonate with you, type them in the comments below, because believe it or not, writing down or typing out new beliefs help them to sink into our subconscious mind. So these beliefs can empower us like this next one. The fifth belief you must have to live a great life is I am resourceful. I am resourceful. Now, I know that there are some people out there in really tough situations right now, but there are many people that highly underestimate their resourcefulness. Many people think something like, it would be really hard for me to earn an extra thousand dollars this month. It would just be impossible. But let's say I said to you, I'll give you $100,000 in 30 days, but in order for you to get it, you have to earn an extra $1,000 within 30 days. How about that for a reframe? How does that change the estimation of your ability to get resourceful and bring in the goods? The truth is, most people are way more resourceful than they give themselves credit for. We're often scared to jump to that new career 
or business or new opportunity because we think it could all go wrong. We won't be able to make ends meet. But in most cases, we'll be fine. In most cases, we're certainly not going to die. And in fact, in many cases, on the other side is what you've been dreaming of all these years. So just know you can make things happen and you are resourceful. The sixth belief you must have to live a great life is, what is a superpower? Kindness is a superpower. As cheesy as it sounds, because ask yourself this throughout your life, how many people have you seen throw shit at yourself and others? People that obviously deep down probably actually do just really want joy and friendship and love, but don't seem to be able to go the right way about it. And you think, if only you would just be more chill and show more kindness, perhaps I'd listen to you and perhaps we'd be able to get on. But the ego so often feels like it needs to defend itself and it will go towards progressively more insane ways to do that, to feel righteous and secure. But at what cost? At the cost of true connection. And the price you pay is needless suffering. Kindness increases the chances that other people will cooperate and you'll be able to influence them. Kindness gets what you want. The truth is, in this ego-dominated world, kindness is a superpower. Which leads me on to the seventh belief you must have to live a great life, which is peace is the nature of my being. Peace is the nature of my being. Now, this isn't so much a belief as it is something that you know on a deep level when you arrive at a certain realization. This is the big goal of any spiritual endeavor to discover the inner peace and happiness inherent in ourselves. Call that divine or not. You see so many people spend their whole lives searching for peace and happiness in external experiences. And of course, I'm not saying we should just all live in caves and meditate all day. There's so much pleasure to be had from the external world. And it's often something to relish in when we get the opportunities. But ultimately, all the things and experiences that we could ever have will only last for a period of time. They are by definition transitory. But there is one thing that's always with you. There is a presence that you are, an awareness that you essentially are, which has a stillness and a peace at its nature. And once you establish yourself as that, you discover a refuge from your suffering and you get to experience that peace and joy that naturally arises from abiding as yourself at the core of your being. Now to some people, this might seem a bit abstract right now, but stay subscribed to my channel and of course we'll be taking a deep dive into this further and this is one of the things we work on together in the consciousness revolution program helping you to discover that inner calm and centeredness so you can be consistently motivated and inspired helping you to transcend the mind which is often full of negative self-talk and operate from a place of conscious awareness so you can overcome these things that are holding you back and start creating more of what you want in your life and have a positive impact on the world because that's what we're all about on this channel. So if you liked this video, please give it a like and hit all when you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos helping you with conscious personal growth.